Welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. And today we're discussing Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's a title with a colon. We'll laugh. We'll <laughs> argue. We might get a little too into it, but at the end of the day, they're just movies. <laughs> I don't know. What does a ghost sound like? That was a little mar- marshmallow man, I think. That's what I was trying to that do. That was scary. I was scared. Guess uh, what, guys? He said spoiler alert in case I, 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 I had trouble understanding. <laughs> and next week, we are going to do The French Dispatch. Woo! Go, oh, go see it. Follow excited. along. It's in more theaters than just one in the, in our province now. <laughs> Yay. It's in English, too. Very good. I'm assuming. Au revoir. There's probably some French in it. I hope so. Okay. David, what are you giving this current movie, Afterlife, out of 10? Nah. Who do you call when a movie's so dull you forget what's happened by the end of the runtime? Oh, wow. 5.8 out of 10. Sorry, 5.8. <laughs> you got a swallow or something? You got some what? milk in there? <laughs> You sound milky. Uh, five point eight. I wouldn't even give it a. Five. I just wanted to make the joke. Four point eight. Four point eight. This movie's below a five. Uh, it's a five point one. Five point one. Okay. Five point one. Like you weren't like turn this off. No, but, but you it, were barely. I was barely engaged. I had a really hard time like really focusing, especially by the end. Man, that ending sucks. Yeah. Okay, but what do you think? Ryan? Interesting. Tell me what you okay, think. Okay, wait. I need background. Have you seen the other movies? Yes. Okay. All uh, of them. One, two, and twenty sixteen. I haven't watched the animated series. In I the nineties. Yeah, I, I didn't watch that. that. And you I saw the 2016 one. Yes. What do you give that one? Higher than this. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the movie sucks. It's we're it's it's hard to compare them. They're so different. Like they they're just entirely different pillars of what worked in the original Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. That being said, I think part of why I like the other one is that everyone hates it so much. So I'm like, it's not as bad as you think it is. And so it's like you, my, my like rebel. Being a contrarian, for sure, right, for sure. Right. So it sucks. It does suck. And I think overall this is better. But I think I was less bored by that one. Okay. Interesting. Riley. Ghostbusters Afterlife has an unbearable amount of cringy and unnecessary fan service, none of which I recognize because I've never seen the other movies. It's a fun Stranger Things, but with less character, 7 out of 10. Out of context, seven. because I haven't seen any of the other sure. Ghostbusters movies, and I'm, I'm, I discovered this after like looking around on the internet to see what people thought about it after I saw the movie, mm. and everyone was like, Obviously, there are some people who are like, oh, man, isn't it my nostalgia? It feels so good. And other people were like, this is Force Awakens, but worse. Yeah. Um, but I I, I came into this completely blind to any Ghostbusters nostalgia at all. I have zero. And I was like, this is fun. I, I don't know. I didn't know that there were all these stupid. I was so surprised to find out that it, <clears throat> it has like 60% or whatever on Rotten Tomatoes, but has 96% audience approval. Right. So it is well liked by... Many people, but yeah. yeah, strongly hated by very vocal people. It's like a fine supernatural adventure action uh, comedy. And uh, now for this, people. <laughs> Afterlife is a fun fact family film. That's a uh, that's an action family. Uh, with an, <laughs> what? an appropriate level of fan service, but not enough spirit to enshrine it. <laughs> you can't uh, pause. You can't pause Not enough puns. spirit to give it staying power. <laughs> Send this one back. <laughs> To the shadow. <laughs> to the beyond. <laughs> to the well yeah, of souls. I'm giving it like, like a 6. Like mm, a 6.25. Sure, yeah. I love realm. our ratings today. This oh. is so funny. Like it, a it 6. It was so weird because I was watching and I was like, I was like, this is okay. I don't want to leave. Yeah. Like there's lots of good stuff in here, but I'm just not like, just not it really yeah. no. into it. There wasn't enough heart. Yeah. I didn't love any of the characters enough. There's like some good laughs. There's some good moments. But what yeah. happened to F- Flynn Wolfhard? Flint? Yeah, Did I, you just call him Flint? No, I said Flint. Well, they, is that his name, Flint? Finn. Finn. <laughs> I feel like this movie, the writers really did look at Stranger Things and like, okay, this is yeah. a formula that works, but then we have to fit it into two hours, so we're going to pare back on all the things that are actually good about Stranger Things. Let's get things. that Wolfhard kid. Totally. Oh, it turns out he is too old. <laughs> <laughs> we better make his sister the main character he did now. Seem, he did seem like... Uh, like, oh man, he was endearing when he was younger, but now he's this like gangly teenager with like. I didn't cut the get hair. ready for your DiCaprio hiatus, buddy. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't hate him. I just think that his character has nothing to do, and yeah. his love interest. Who is she? Yeah, he's kind of a non-character, and the only yeah. reason that he like sort of works is because we are like, oh, it's a Stranger Things. Good. Oh, totally. Yeah, that's all I know. Was the marketing? I like. I don't watch a lot of trailers. You guys know I don't watch the whole trailer. But I thought he was the main character of this movie. Mm. Did you guys think that going in, or was it known that she's the main character? I I knew that she was the main character. To me, the mo- marketing focused around Paul Rudd. He was the one that they were oh. doing like the clips of and all the yeah. stuff. Uh, like the first clip they showed was him at the Walmart. Yeah, I had holding no Baskin idea. Robbins looking so at much, so much product brand. placement. It was rough. It Anyways, was rough. guys, we're gonna talk all about this 
poo storm <laughs> of e ectoplasm, yeah. whatever. Uh, after this message from our sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. PIA helps you hide your true IP address so that you can bypass your restrictions and censorship. You can connect up to 10 devices at once and includes an internet kill switch if your VPN, what? sorry Riley, gets disconnected what? involuntarily. <laughs> That's the Proton Pack. Thank you. PIA is available Jeez. for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even as a Chrome extension if the key make the key maker. The <laughs> key master ends up uh, mating with that gatekeeper, you know. So check Ooh. it out at lmg.gg slash carpool critics. And why does she get a champagne dress and he <laughs> yeah. never tries to close? I was, well, I was waiting. That's, that's a fan thing because in the original, like uh Sigourney Weaver gets that dress. Yeah. Oh, then, it's the same dress? It's a very similar oh dress. Oh my gosh. But that it was such a mistake that he didn't get an amazing suit. Like I was expecting him to like pull off his like torn torn shirt and like just has this glamorous. In the suit. first one, does he have a suit? Does no, the, the, it, no, no, no. He just. Oh, so they were doing the same thing where yeah. she gets an outfit, and he doesn't. Yeah. Okay, well, I like it then. Oh my okay. gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me uh, let me remind everyone. I don't think what so. happened. Uh, is it even necessary if you've seen the previous movies? Maybe it's just all the same. <laughs> No, it's uh, pretty different. It That's seems different. It, it is, it is. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him. <laughs> 32 years after the events of Ghostbusters 2, Egon Spengler, weird name, has relocated to the small town of Somerville, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, where he traps a ghost in a secret compartment in his house before dying of a heart attack. Learning that she's inherited property, Egon's estranged daughter Callie and her two children, Trevor and Phoebe, move into his dilapidated farmhouse only to learn that it's worthless. Trevor gets a job at a diner to get closer to local girl Lucky, while Phoebe attends summer school where she befriends a boy named Podcast. <laughs> Do we ever get that kid's name? <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> There's no scene with his mom yep. being like, Aaron! That's it. That's on his birth certificate. <laughs> and her teacher, uh, Phoebe's teacher, eccentric seismologist Gary Gruberson, who is investigating the town's frequent earthquakes. At home, Phoebe finds a PKE meter, allowing an unseen spirit to lead her to the hidden ghost trap, while Trevor finds the Ecto-1 vehicle and repairs it. Gary, an avid Ghostbuster fan, recognizes the ghost trap and opens it, releasing the ghost inside, which escapes to a nearby abandoned mine. Later, the spirit in Phoebe's house leads her to Egon's lab in the basement, where it directs her to a repair a proton pack, and she realizes the spirit is her grandfather. Phoebe, Podcast, and Trevor successfully use the proton pack in Ecto-1 to capture Muncher, a metal-eating ghost, but are arrested and have their gear confiscated. Phoebe uses her one phone call to reach Ghostbuster, Ray Stance, who explains that he and the other Busters doubted Egon's belief that the evil god Gozer was going to return in Somerville, the site of Gozerian cultist Evo Shandor's mining operation. Callie and Gary interrupt their date to retrieve the children who head to the mine to discover a Gozerian temple, Evo Shandor in suspended animation, and devices set up by Egon to stop Gozer's attempts at escaping, which are the cause of the earthquakes. Ah. Then, Gary and Callie are possessed by ghosts, known as the Keymaster and Gatekeeper, who destroy Egon's devices, allowing Gozer to manifest. Shandor is awakened, but Gozer immediately kills him. In the ensuing chaos, the kids retrieve their gear and lure Gozer to Egon's farm, which is revealed to be a giant ghost trap. But the trap fails, and just when all seems lost, Surviving Ghostbusters Ray, Peter, and Winston show up, along with Egon's ghost, Ugh. who helps Phoebe and the boys restrain Gozer, while Trevor activates the trap once more, capturing Gozer and their minions. Uh, Egon hugs his family before vanishing, and in a post credit scene, Winston, a wealthy businessman, has the Ecto-1 completely restored and placed in their old firehouse, while a warning light on its Ecto-containment unit begins blinking. What about that mid credit scene? Yeah, I just well, skipped I that one because it's it's Bill Murray and uh, Sigourney Weaver and having a fun you whole thing. You skipped it. You didn't say it now. Yeah, I just fast forwarded. Oh, I thought you meant like you skipped <laughs> it in the theater. I'm like, damn, man. <laughs> I asked them to. But what, was ha what were they trying to show so us? So that's a callback to the first one. Because in the another... first one, he's doing that test with people. It's like a couple and he's like flirting with a girl using that where he's like, oh, wow, you're psychic. And the guy's like, oh, you're nothing. Yeah. And so it's a callback to that scene, but with Sigourney Weaver and reversing the roles. I skipped okay. it because there was no plot. Relevance. Yeah, no, I, it's I, just fun. It's just yeah. a fun. I thing wanted on. to see Sir Garney, so. <clears throat> yeah. Did you? I love Sir So, wait, have you, you didn't say, have you seen them? My disclosure is this never seen the 2016 one. The first one, I've never like put on and watched. Actually, the first and second one, I don't recall ever putting on and watching them through. Right. They were just, you know, you're flipping channels, they're yeah. on. They but had I've a seen, presence. I'm sure I've seen the whole movie, just never sequentially. The second one with that big painting. Mm hmm. I remember being creeped out by that as a child. Mm. Someone put that on in the house. That was scary to me. But yeah, never seen it as an adult or even 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 a teenager. I feel like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this, but like, when did they when did they come out these movies? Eighty eighty four or something. Eighty four, eighty nine, and then eighty seven or eighty nine or something. Oh, okay. late eighties. So I feel like I, I feel like it was just like, but I'm older than you guys. 
yeah. by a couple of years. A yeah. couple? Aren't I'm nostalgic for a time before you're I was eight, alive. What are you? What are you? Eighty nine? Yeah, baby. Uh, but you're eighty. <laughs> I'm ninety one. You're ninety one. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I'm not like all nineties kids were nostalgic for them. a time. Yeah, yeah, but I just I just thought it was like a before my time thing, but I guess no. it's not at all. No, I just, people are just missed it. Weirdly nostalgic for Ghostbusters, even though there's like kind of only one movie that or one thing that's agreed is good. And what is that thing? That's Ghostbusters one, the first one. Yeah, the second one is like right. most people think is okay. Yeah, uh, the animated show is just whatever. And then I watched 2016, that as a kid. I li- I've seen a couple episodes as a kid, but I like, didn't Slimer. click with me. Yeah, that guy. I I, I encountered no, I, I encountered feedback that this movie <laughs> was <laughs> <laughs> it reached me through the ether <laughs> <laughs> that this movie like had a Stranger Things vibe, mm-hmm. but the original movies weren't that at all not well at all. did this movie even have a stranger things vibe or was it just the presence of a wolf no i think that it's like the three age groups that yeah. are ha- like doing the paranormal investigation like even the age ages that are happening it's like there's like the the 10 11 12 year old kid yeah there's the teenager that's having the love story and then there's the parent that's the single alcoholic mom who is falling in love with like an authority figure like there's a lot of parallels yeah to what's happening in stranger things no synth wave though no, no, well, because it's not in the '80s, but it's kind of the same. Yeah, it's the same vibe as you say. Like yeah. we're in a small town, we're yeah. discovering things, and yeah, but like there's the comedy is still there as it is in Stranger Things. Yep. But the the parallel I was trying, or the contrast I was trying to draw there is that the original Ghostbusters movie, as far as I understand them, are just straight comedies. They're not like there's no like real sentimental or like no sentiment emotional value to it it's I just wouldn't kind call of a, them straight it's, comedy it's just kind of a goofy comedy i think they they it's told a, a line it's not a screwball comedy no but they told the line between i haven't like, seen them <laughs> no like, you haven't they're not they're not straight comedies yeah there, there's like a real element of sort of horror to them like they they take their horror seriously and i think that's one of the things this movie does well in the first half is like it takes like the ghost seriously it's mm. not like the the 2016 one where they're just joking about ghosts and like there's nothing right. nothing there's no danger um, in this one, they went as far as the uh, teacher character is putting on these scary movies in front of the class, and I really think that just serves to put the audience on edge. Like, just no. show here, here's just a, a clip from Cujo yeah. and a clip from Chucky <laughs> just for a second, just yeah. to make you like ah, just make you yeah. uncomfortable but is and that, screen you along. Do those are those played for horror? Or are they? I I just well, laughed. I, I found the like. I thought they were just there funny. was a few moments where I was like, <gasps> uh, and that was when Egon sits in the chair and the hands come out, which is again a call out. Um, but when they're at the well. Uh, and like the souls are coming out. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, this is like That's not pretty scary. This isn't funny. This isn't silly. This well, is like, this is very, very serious. It might yeah. not be horror, but it's yeah. like, this is a real problem. It's action adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think it's like, it's like all the stakes. There's, now there's actual stakes. Fact shamily. Fact shamily. Yeah. Are you? You're not. I, I think you're saying facsimile. Like that when you say that, I was like, you try to make a portmanteau out of action and family. I won't. Faction. That's well, a different word. I won't do it. Actually. You can't. That's a different. Damn it. You see? can't make Fact shamily. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about what we like about this movie. Phoebe. I love Phoebe. Phoebe She's rules. the best. What's her name? What's the actor's name? She's Phoebe to me forever. It's McKenna Grace. She was awesome. So charming. She had the best jokes in the movie, man. When uh, she's like, does the pun about the triangle? She does the slow wink. Oh, oh that actually wink. made me laugh. She was, was that hilarious. real? What do you mean? Well, like the the it almost seemed like CGI. It was no! like <laughs> what would be CGI? Well, it was just so perfect. Like yeah. her face didn't move at all. And yeah. It was just like Wah. she has that power. Yeah, but yeah, she but she just does it well because like you can do a million winks in a million different ways. But the fact that it's just like you could tell that she was so happy with her own joke yeah. and like it just works. Definitely the best Super part authentic. of her performance was that wink. Seth. She also kind of kidding. looked like just kidding. what's like her grandpa's name Spangler. Yeah, yeah. well, you're kind of channeling the, some Spangler hair right now, David. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, with the glasses, obviously helped a lot, and yeah. the curly hair. Yeah, but, but even uh, the face shape, I feel like yeah. she kind of looked. The, like but him. the casting was really good. I definitely like. There was no moment where I doubted that she was Egon Spangler's my my favorite character's yeah. uh, daughter. I, I, I like, like how, the tall one with glasses. That's <laughs> me. Yeah. I like how much respect they give her character. Like she's she's very intelligent, and she's like actually kind of discovering things and and moving the plot forward with through her intelligence See, and i like that that's the that's my one criticism okay, of the character okay. because i i she's endearing she's funny i like her like burgeoning friendship with with uh podcasts they're like kind of growing to know each other and like exploring kids exploring mysterious ruins always fun but uh you know it always bothers she's 12 years old and she knows about freaking like she do you know she's keeping up with freaking yeah. gary on, on the seismology she's she's got this mary sue thing where she just like 
oh, I'm <laughs> I'm rewiring our house's electricity to provide more current. It's like, all right, oh, you're 12. Well, I think it would work if she had like a specialization. But yeah, the fact yeah. that she's like yeah. so good at That's all it. science. If she was like good at electric stuff. Yeah. Fair enough. But yeah. like she also knows about seismology. Yeah. And she also, that know. being said, it's a fact channel movie. So yeah. right. What you going to do? My actual gripe with her is that the, I don't think she really has an arc. Yeah, her arc is really isn't uh, her arc is being seen mm. like I'm a scientist. Yeah, but she actually knows she's a scientist the whole movie, like from the beginning to the end. I don't think yeah. she changes. It's just that her mom, she gets to tell her mom, "I'm not weird. I'm a scientist." Yeah, <laughs> yeah or like, I am weird, but like, it's a different way of being. This is me. See me for who I am. It's funny though because that's such a small conflict in the movie. Like we get a little bit of the beginning where she's rewiring the house and her mom's like annoyed about it, but she's not like. Stop trying to be a scientist and be a be a get in that beauty pageant. Yeah, like, be a useless <laughs> drunk like me. <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll get to the mom, yeah. but but uh, yeah, I I think a uh, arc was like um, missing here a little bit because yeah. obviously we're we're on her side. We're watching them go through and like hopefully they succeed at this task they're doing and they do eventually. But like, what does she learn? I think I, to me the movie is trying to say that her arc is <clears throat> her finding where she belongs. Mm. I think she's kind of lost. I think she knows who she is, but she doesn't right. like feel part of the family. She doesn't feel like she's part of anything. And so really identifying with her grandfather helps her solidify in that way. Yeah. I don't think it's particularly strong. Well, why do you think they went with I'm a scientist versus I'm a ghostbuster? Well, because would that have been stronger? Because I think that Maybe. was kind of the whole thing about the Ghostbusters, right? Is that they weren't like I mean, I think Bill Murray's character, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, he was like, oh, we want to sell this and stuff. Like he was, yeah, he was he, kind of the business. But man. the other guys were like scientists, uh, not Winston, but like Ray, the two, two Egon yeah. and Dan Aykroyd's yeah. character were Ray, like scientists, right? And it was like it was more about the science, and we're doing this, and like, uh, so and and they're trying to like convince people that things are real, and they're yeah. like they don't believe them or whatever. So there's that there's that struggle to be like no listen to the science yep and so i, I kind of felt that here a little bit where it's like it's not being a ghostbuster isn't important to her but like learning that her grandfather was into the same stuff that she's into yeah was was like a nice little twist or not twist but like reveal you know i i did like that i feel like that's something i want to talk a little bit more later where the this movie kind of i think gets the intention of the originals wrong where by focusing on one of the characters that takes the ghost busting too seriously the movie takes ghosts too seriously and it mm. it loses some of the, like the tongue and cheekness of the originals i think but i think for this movie it serves well her character is spengler's granddaughter because then it's just it all it all ends up for taking yeah. it all so seriously that's kind of what i'm saying though with the with the mismatch of tone yeah. well, how much do you think the tone of the original is is just bill murray and his weird like <laughs> oh yeah. it's a lot he carries a lot of irreverent it. like he's just right. his own flavor and if without him can a series still channel that Nope. Well, obviously, <laughs> they, really know. No. Well, and it's it's funny because when he c comes in, I was expecting him to be like, "Hell yeah, here we go! I love Bill Murray," but he just feels so out of place in this yeah. movie. He's and not that he's, he's doing 80. a bad job. <laughs> well, that was another thing yeah, where you're like, you're old. not like, "Oh, nice." The Ghostbusters are like, "Oh no, the Ghostbusters!" They get oh thrown against that car. I was like, <laughs> "It's <laughs> done. Oh you're never my. healing, <laughs> guys." The Dan Aykroyd phone oh, call, worst, oh, worst, so bad. bad. As soon as he comes in, I'm like, "Oh, it's Dan Aykroyd." And the scene like continues playing. I'm just like, oh no, oh yeah. Ever no. since I, ever since I heard him on Joe Rogan, <laughs> he I was forgot like, how to act. Dan Aykroyd's kind of icky, <laughs> but you know what was awesome? Um, we're just supposed to be talking about things we like. The moment where uh, Dan Aykroyd's character is talking to podcast, and he, he's like, oh, you're that guy. Oh, yeah. I love that podcast. You're my subscriber. That was that so was amazing well, and meta because yeah. Aykroyd is a legit conspiracy theorist. Oh, is he? Person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was so funny. He believes in ghosts and stuff. And that's, oh. I think, part of why the tone of the first one works is that, like, Bill Murray is, like, the sarcastic guy who doesn't really believe in it. And then right. there's, like, there's uh, Egon who's, like, taking it seriously, but he's a scientist and he, like, believes in facts. Yeah. But then there's just Ray who's just, like, some crazy dude who believes in ghosts. Wait, he wrote the first Wait, one. what? So, like, their, their characters in the first movie are, like real like like their actual characters They're, like it's like not in real life exactly based on it but it's like you can see how they rolled off of the net yeah you can see how it Dan, Dan Aykroyd wrote I believe he wrote the first one and then they had to do a they rewrote it they they pulled in who's Ramis? the other yeah. Harold Ramis yeah. and he his track record had that kind of more like Spielbergian kind of like heart and and spark oh that's Reitman that's you're talking uh I, Ivan Reitman that's yeah. the director yeah Harold so, Ramis is Egon Right, who helped write it, but he yeah he also has he did a bunch of script writing yep. and he was known for these kind of like tongue in cheek irreverent movies. Yep, yeah. All I'm trying to get at is I know that the original screenplay was like way more serious 
Yeah, if it's Dan Aykroyd one, yeah, I'm sure it was and, full on. Yeah, and then they changed it to have this. <laughs> so it's such a weird. It's dude. an. You said a second ago that um, you know, they had this whole like irreverent tongue in cheek feel, and like there was a lot of improv and stuff in the originals, and I think that's obviously you know that's what they were going for by with the 2016 one, yep. where they were like, okay. I think what happened is they wanted to, is this what happened? They wanted to get the original guys back, but then they're like, we don't really want to do it. And then they were like, all right, we're going to reboot the franchise because we have the rights to this. We want to do something with it. I thought it was like a fair idea to be like, what if we did a reboot with new characters and there are women this time and they're all comedians. They're funny women. Um, but it just, you know, it, well, the- like to be fair to that one, because it was a bit of a, of a, of a, of a clusterfuck. Yeah. Um, I can see what they were trying to do because they were that. If anything, that one's more true to the spirit and the feel and the tone of the, the world. Wasn't ready. It's, not, it's not. It's not quite right. No, the first one. I haven't has, seen it. <laughs> the first one has a little bit of improv and like like uh, Bill Murray brings a lot of it, but it's it's tight and it's like everything kind of has a purpose. And when they let Bill Murray improvise, it's just like a moment and it's fucking hilarious. Oh, okay, but the the 2016 one, they they were, it's just a bunch of skits and it's like there is not really a strong through line until like. It just sort of happens. Oh. It's just a bunch of scenes where they get to improv against each other, and it feels way more like Saturday Night Live than a movie. Gotcha. And that's the problem: is they, they, there was no direction. It was just like let these funny people be funny. Yeah, I think that this movie did a pretty dang good job of rebooting while keeping threads from the original. Like it was pretty mm-hmm. smart to be like, "Hey, we get all the old stuff, the old car, the old weapons, but there's some new stuff because Egon was alive right until the beginning of this movie, yeah. so he made that like RC car." That goes along with the old car, right? Because if they if they didn't have that, then they wouldn't have any new stuff, and mm-hmm. it wouldn't be fresh. So they found a good way to like kind of thread yeah. all those things together. Yeah, I think most of the fan service didn't bother me, and I I, I like I think it, it works, and they, I think they thread it well into the story. Like it all feels very natural to how it would play out, mm. except <laughs> the uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow guys. Yeah, they were great. They had the theater rolling and laughter. Oh, really? Like really? Every, in my it theater, was, people were losing it. They were the, like, really, they had these like little funny vignettes where they were like trying to kill themselves. Oh, themselves. Love, the barbecue, the yeah. barbecue was my favorite. Those yeah. were funny people little moments. People loved it in the theater, but yeah. really, it doesn't make any sense. No. Like just because one of those marshmallow characters happened to be possessed in the first movie, why would that happen again? It, should, yeah. it yeah. really should just be any random thing. That was just fan service, but. Yeah. Who cares? That it was fine. And when podcast was covered, that when when podcast, a character who's like pretty useless, yeah, especially next to the main character, uh, what's her name again? Phoebe. 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 Yeah, he couldn't do nothing next to her. Yeah, uh, yeah. But he got to have his own fight at the in the climax, and it was right, against right. the mini oh, marshmallows. Yeah. That was perfect. And when he comes out covered in marshmallow, <laughs> that was awesome. Even also, just the first time that he zaps him in, in marshmallows, him. I didn't, yeah. Yeah. Good. Also, that kid did great. I like podcast. Like, like it was like. You know, it's a kid actor, and sometimes you can like really see through it, which is like a huge testament to Phoebe as well. Because like I, I never really, saw yeah, I did it. not see through her. Like I was like, I believe you're that character. This kid, uh, Logan Kim, is the actor's name. He, uh, you know, you can see through it a little bit more. But like I thought he was funny. He delivered his lines yeah. really well. He's he had, a fun actor. He had a little bit of Disney Channel yeah, movie to me, for sure. but he, I agree. Their pairing was by far the most interesting through line of this Absolutely. movie. Absolutely, by yeah. far. They were such yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. They were really which is good funny together. because I think that kind of speaks to one of the weird things about this movie is that they really they try <laughs> like the amount of nostalgia references. Like I watched the movie and I'm like, oh, I think I identified a few nostalgia references in there, and then I read some other stuff and I'm like, oh, that was a thing. Oh, that was a reference. Okay, and then I'm just like, the more I read about this movie or like look into this movie, I realize that like literally there's a there's a callback every like 10, 10 seconds, seconds or something. And it's funny because while that means that they obviously tried so hard to just fit as much nostalgia into this movie as possible, the movie is the best when it's not mm. when, like as a, as a non Ghostbusters movie. Like if like if you pretend that the other movies didn't exist. Yeah. It's a great movie. Totally. It's a fun family well, thing. I feel like the end of it topples under the weight of its fucking nostalgia. Like, man, mm. if it wasn't Gozer and the the Hellhounds, and they created some interesting new ghost that worked for the story they specifically, done that, obviously, I think it would just like it would build and be way more interesting. And I think by the the end of the movie, I would have been like, oh, there was a point to this whole thing, but. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, we have to do the same enemy, the same, like, the act three is almost exactly the same as Ghostbusters one. And then they have, like, the original Ghostbusters come in and save the day. It's just, the movie feels like it's going somewhere. And then it just, like, the the weight of all this <laughs> these memories just tip it in the wrong and way. And then just yeah. back at the Death Star. Yeah. Yeah, it literally. Yeah. I the feel Death like Star I, again. I struggle to know who this movie's for. Like, 
it's not really for Ghostbusters fans. I think Ghostbusters fans are like, oh, this is fucking cheesy and like doesn't mm-hmm. get the tone right. So is it for children? Well, it's, it's, it's for Ghostbusters fans who have children. Mm. So you can bring your kids and they'll, they'll like I went with my sister who's 15 and she thought it was like the best movie ever. Okay. I don't think she's really seen the originals. Yeah. The more, I think it did a good, there's tons of references, but it does stand alone. That's, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you haven't seen the other ones and you kind of get it, right? You're no, like, I, that's you like what I'm it saying. the most maybe. I, I gave it a seven out of 10 uh, out of context. And then as I've discovered more about the fact that this is like the Force Awakens, but worse uh, in terms of nostalgia bait and uh, nostalgia reboot. I'm like, okay, I'd probably give if if I knew what was going on when I watched it, I'd probably give it more like a six or a six point five or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, as a as in my mind, a new movie. I've never like my introduction to this franchise. I had a great time, for sure, surprisingly for sure. great time. I yeah. thought I went in being like, oh, I don't even want. I'm not a Ghostbusters fan. I don't care about this, and I did endeared me to it. I almost think it's better. It's like it's the same way. Sometimes it feels like movies and games are designed for people that are like tangentially knowledgeable about things where you, you kind of know the iconography. So when something pops up, you're like, well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you actually really know, you're like, ugh. like the I for me, the ones where I rolled the most of the callbacks are when he pulls out the crunch bar from yeah. his thing. Because like in the original, as like an improv bit, Bill Murray just hands right. him a thing. So it's like totally nothing. Or yeah. the Twinkie. Uh, it's yeah. like, again, he's like using a Twinkie to explain like, this is how bad it is. This is regular Twinkie size. Like, this is, like, it's 35 feet long Twinkie. That's how bad we're dealing with. Yeah. And, like, and this is, like, there's just a Twinkie. Yeah. <laughs> he loves Twinkies. Yes. They get their dedicated shots. And those yeah. were those were slightly annoying to me, even yeah. as someone who has no idea what the reference is to, because it's, like, the camera just holds on it for yeah. an extra you second, know. and I'm just, like, so that's a thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and it, that actually is a disservice to it being a standalone movie, because yeah, usually sure. when you see something like that, it's, like, a Chekhov's gun. Like, yeah, the what are they going to do with that back. Twinkie later? But then in this case, nothing. And some of the jokes that were structured that way did not land for me. Like when they first get to the house and there's the Egon's partner, that woman is there. Oh, yeah. And she says something like, she ends the scene with something like, uh, is it worth, is there any value? N- nothing other than sentimental value or something yeah. like that. And this end oh, yeah, scene. Yeah. And you, I was mean, like, you mean other than the sentimental value? I was like, was that a joke? <laughs> Dude, was that a joke? Oh, was what? that supposed to be a joke? Like, it oh, just I thought that was a joke. I didn't laugh oh. at all. I was well, like, she's like, you're telling me that it's worthless. So that she's yeah. like, other than sentimental value? It was like an 80s joke. It was oh, like, hey, they works. did the same writing know. as... Yeah. I thought it was good. And I mean, it was just I an opportunity know. to bring in another character. I it was like home. a joke that needed a laugh track from a sitcom. Oh, like yeah. a, it was like a Murphy <laughs> Brown joke. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like the first half of this movie is like solid. Oh, yeah, I agree. It's so good. Yep. Um, Around the halfway, two-thirds mark is when things start to go off the rails a little bit. Is that because the scale of it all gets too big for I you? So. No, I think it just... Well, maybe, but I think it's it's more that um, they... <laughs> there's like the movie knows that it only has a limited runtime left, so then it's like we gotta fit in all this stuff. We gotta yeah. get, you know... Um, but but up to that point, I feel like, you know, the, the chemistry between the the members of the family is good. Uh, they, they have, fun. like, little quips with each other, and it's great. Like, yeah. he's like, you know, uh, uh, Phoebe starting to, like, they're, they're uh, what, what is it? They're in the car, and she's oh, yeah. going to, to summer school, and they're like, okay, what are you going to do? Yeah, tell a joke. Tell a joke, yeah. and then that, that's where the joke bit yeah. starts coming up. Why can't you trust Adams? What's that? Why can't you oh, trust Adams? Oh, right. Because they make up everything. <laughs> yeah. It's a great joke. Yeah, I love all those jokes. She t- tells like four or five of those yeah. throughout that the movie. That hamster one's the best one. Which one's a hamster one? Oh, yeah. What's the difference between a cigarette and a hamster? Or, or what is it? Y- you uh, put him oh. the put when you put him in your mouth and light him on fire. Or they're both bad for you. Oh, what's the something like that? Yeah, guys, we it's fine. See <laughs> the movie. See the movie. <laughs> we don't remember the joke. We can't do it. <laughs> it was hilarious though, and yeah. I really like. I actually like Paul Rudd's character. I like yep. when he's like, yeah. we got to get out of here. I'm an adult and liable. Yeah. <laughs> he was good. I he, feel like he's got they, fun energy. I think like what you're saying where they have to fit so much in the end, they kind of just finish what his character is doing and then he just is the do- oh my dog gosh. and then that that's the end of him. Like that's the end of his character. Yeah. And it sucks because I really wanted him to have like a heroic moment because he's the one adult who believes her. Right. And so it would have been cool to have him like, like back her up at some point or do something where like he gets to have his moment. But, yeah. The point, but just, the point at which the movie goes off the ra- or uh, starts tanking is when the ghost that was Munchy. released, huh? Munchy. No, Muncher. not Muncher. The other, no, the one of the the gatekeeper, the oh, okay. one, of, one of those guys, uh, him in the flies out of the mountain and goes into the Walmart. That's the point. Because from that point on, I don't know what's going on with it. Like we get all the the yeah. the, the weird callbacks with the Puff Man, and then the editing from like the yeah. the ensuing scenes. I was just like honestly so confused because I was like, wait, what's going on? Like because like. 
J.K. Simmons plays Evo Shandor. That was wild. He, <laughs> he's like, whoa, J.K. Hey, S- Simmons yeah. in this movie? Yeah. Well, uh, just J- J- J.K. He's J- right. Hey. Right. Gozer, <laughs> Gozer comes back. And then I'm like, is that Olivia Wilde? Yeah. Olivia Wilde's playing Gozer, but she didn't do her voice. Like, the there, there was a body double and oh, a voice my. person, but then, like, for the close-ups, it's Olivia Wilde. That's weird. J.K. So Simmons weird. is Evo Shandor, and he, like, wakes up, and he's like, oh, I've been waiting for you here. He dies immediately. I was like, what the Which I, I did What's like that, because that was a subversion. You're like, oh, it's J.K. It's going to be important. Like, he's going to actually be a character, and then you only get, like, a second is of him alive. Is he the guy who's in the painting in the second one? No, that's um, that's another entity, some oh, know, ancient bro. ancient. God oh, because I was like, who's this Evo guy? Does he is he in the other movies? I think Shandor is mentioned. Evo uh, Shandor, yeah, he built the, the building apartment. that they have. But the that's big, in this movie that's what that they, they say mentioned. in this movie. Yeah, I can't remember if he's... no, 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 but they they do mention him. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, you would know. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I looked up the, Wikipedia. I, I was on Wikipedia. I was just like, who is this guy? What? Why? Who? But yeah, I think for me, the Selenium. Moment, I all the Walmart stuff. I was kind of like sort of going along with. Um, I thought it was done when he was running to his car to rush away. But I think for me, the moment where the movie turned was the scene where they go home and the mom is possessed mm. when she's in the chair and she's like growling at them. I'm yeah. like, Ooh, this is kind of scary. But then she like hops to the other side of the chair and she has like her hands on, <laughs> yeah, like, on the arms. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then she jumps out the window and runs on all yeah. fours. And you're like, oh, oh, they've well, lost. They've lost the, this is what's, the magic. The, yeah, it's weird. That I don't know, me. because there are definitely times like like it, in that moment for a second. I'm like, oh, are we going to like. Is this gonna be like a horror moment? But then it goes real goofy, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're going goofy. Yeah. And then w- I think the next scene after that is is her and uh, Gary meeting up and doing the <laughs> transformation thing, and I and that like, could have been so good. But they make I don't understand. Like they make a reference to like oh the gate ma- the gatekeeper and the keymaster have to congregate. What do yeah, they say? Formally. Yeah, something like meet yeah, yeah, formally yeah. or something, and then like so the implication is that, that they have sex, sex. but. It's like, wait, why though? And I don't know. And then yeah. it's, it's so goofy. It's so goofy and with I, the dress, but like he doesn't transform. But then it's weird. Like the having I, not seen, I yeah. feel like that would have seemed less uh, out of left field having seen the first one. Not really though. Like it's like you know what's happening. You know that two people have to get possessed by the dogs because this happens. Yeah, you know. But like it still felt really weird tonally. Like even the fact that he had like the flower on his ear, even though he was possessed, it was like. The flower thing, that's a Paul Rudd choice. Yeah. That's not a demon dog character choice. That right. doesn't really fit. We should have seen them doing it yeah. as dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an expansion beyond the first movie, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just what everyone Just wants. get like a BBC Planet Earth moment. Like, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I, just, I just hate that the movie... Animal Planet. ...did Gozer and the Demon Dogs again. Like, Do you guys feel like it was a good choice to just have the same villain? Like, do you think it was like worth it to be like, oh, I recognize them, or was it no not? I mean, I hadn't seen the previous movies, but the amount of times that they kept saying Gozer and Evo Shandor and blah blah blah, it's like he's back or whatever. <sighs> and I was like, oh, okay, so they've done this before, and yeah, it felt. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know the extent to which they were copying it. No. So then I watched the movie, and I'm kind of like, that's kind of weird, but whatever. I mean, it was an emotional ending. I liked the whole, you know, uh, ego Egon showing up and helping his family, and then having some resolution there. Um, but then after I, once I read that, like it was literally the same plot yeah. in terms of like the demon dogs possess people and then they both need to be there for Gozer to become it. Those animated. are the rules. Uh, I know. I just, well, I didn't know this. And then it's like, oh wait, they literally just recycled the yeah. exact, it's the death star plot. And I was like, that's stupid. Yeah. It's what you didn't feel that way. Well, I mean, I didn't, f- I thought that it was spiced up enough in that all the characters, all the pieces in the game are different, Yeah, but it's the same g- kind of game. Yeah. So I thought that was okay. Um, they need to stop doing this. I like the, uh, there's conveniences though, like having the key master and gatekeeper. It, it works well with having the parents involved yeah. in doing something. So that's kind of nice. I don't know, man. I don't. I, that villain didn't rock my world. She's just one of those like evil looking people yeah. who prowls well, around. And, and I was like, sh- yeah. I'm not clear what her what's gonna happen. Is she gonna eat the world? I don't. That's know. one thing I found very annoying. Is like the the kind of ultimate shot of her is when the two dogs are there and she sits on her throne and i'm like uh so she's she's good <laughs> like she's she's, <laughs> this is, she's chill she's this okay. the end yeah, yeah okay and she's, it's like it's just like won. you said it's really not clear what she wants what her goal is and like yeah is she gonna devour the world and i feel like the movie really kind of messed that up where it's just like, like hey look it's gozer but it's like who is gozer yeah exactly so, for was, people who haven't seen it no. it's just like oh, wow what and if if it is gozer this familiar baddie then why would the original ghostbusters not care about Egon's warnings. 
Why would they be like, yeah, eh, it's right. probably not true. What do you mean? You fought this danger before. <laughs> I I, yeah, I hated that I feel that, like... that whole idea that they don't believe. I'm like, dude, you guys are fucking fighting ghosts. Like, I think you can you can trust him a little bit. Yeah. Like, get, trust him a little bit. We I don't mean, believe him. He's yeah. devoting his life to this. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It's I'm not done. like, I mean, depending on how, depending on when that like conversation took place, like maybe if it was, if it was many, many years after there had been no ghost activity and everything was chilling and Egon was like, oh, I think he's, he's coming back and- and they were like, yeah, yeah. right. I mean, I can kind of see that, but sure. but it definitely, yeah, it's like you you would expect them to take the threat seriously after going through what they went through. But wow, wow. Um, can we talk about the mom? Yeah, I Callie didn't, didn't hate her. Carrie she's okay. Coon, she's okay. I feel, I feel like they don't really define her super well, other than that she's a complete fuck up. Yo, <laughs> yeah, she's just, just a broke mom that, who's trying. Yeah. I guess. okay, but she's a broke mom who's trying. But like, is she an alcoholic? Give her some. Yeah, well, you see her pass out a couple quality. times with, with like a thing of wine. She I don't know if she's tired. Or... She doesn't appear to try. No. At all. Like, okay, she. We we get the feel. We get the idea that she's like tried to get jobs or whatever. But then they move to this house and like. Yeah. Trevor gets a job at the like they don't even we don't even show her doing anything to try and provide for the family I at agree. all. That really bothered me. There's we know from her one of the opening scenes when she talks to her, her landlord that she's like, okay, I have this thing I need. Well, it's inheritance, but she's yes, she's exactly. Trying. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. I have an inheritance. Like, she, I don't know. I can no, understand. I, I can understand from a character standpoint how being abandoned by your or or thinking you've been abandoned. Well, he, he was, was abandoned. She was abandoned man. by by her dad. Uh, would kind of lead her to be like, uh, nothing matters or whatever. But at the same time, she really, she cares about her kids. Yeah. And you'd think that that would motivate her to like try, you know, and yep. be a better parent, you know, like she learned something. But like, I guess there was just she no just room. doesn't give a shit. There is no room. There's no the room movie. in the movie to I be agree. like, and her plot of getting a job when really she just needs to meet the teacher. Well, I think Honestly, all, I all, you do, I all you have to do is like have her go apply at the school and meet. That's like how she meets yeah. Paul Rudd or like she comes home and she's like in a business attire and she's just like defeated. Literally. Yeah, like, I, just, I, I, I agree. Like I was like, did she, did she even try or is she like just chilling Or maybe just like, or we maybe saw her just at the like, hardware store. Or, so <laughs> she likes to keep busy. She paints the walls. I feel like just like they come home and she's like looking over papers or something yeah. or like trying to figure something. out something, you know? And she's like, uh, how am I going to make this work or something? Yeah. Like th that's all you need. But like we only ever see her just being like, hey, I'm going to go hang out with Gary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Get myself guess, a man. I guess we'll figure out everything. Like, I don't know. That it's US weird. teacher salary, because, you know? Because yeah, the other thing, because, <laughs> because she's just, she's a, she's a piece of shit, but it's not played like that. It's played like, oh, we're just a quirky family. I, I just think that, it's like James said, there was no time in the movie to really develop There's time! That. You just need a little uh, no, throwaway I, line. Yes, for that, but I think to develop her more fully. Oh, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's just, they, they, they bit off a bit more than they managed to chew they could have done it they didn't make it a priority but i think yeah. i agree with you they could have done it she could have worked at the jail that they, they go to she something. could have worked at the yeah. school she, yeah whatever yeah uh, but even with what we have i found the the ending i teared up a little bit i know that other people think it's cringe as hell but having not seen the other movies i don't know i've never seen egon spengler before and so like having him exist in the story as this disembodied ghost and like later I like I like later i learned that the tone at the end is like doesn't really have any place in a Ghostbusters movie, but ha not having that information at the end, I was like, "This is nice." Phoebe, Cal, uh, uh, and and the mom and Trevor, they think they've been abandoned. You know, they've they're estranged, and yeah. little do they know that he's there supporting them. He's just like, you know, he he had to go protect them from Earth or whatever. Obviously, there are plot holes with this whole thing, but I just mean it was a nice moment, and uh, I, the CGI looked pretty good. I think yeah. they, I think the, the all the stuff. At the beginning of the movie, before we see the embodied Egon, I think it really works. Like I like the the, the personality that comes through that lamp. You're like, ooh, there's that yeah, cool. that was fun. I think when he, the hands first show up to support Phoebe shooting, that works. That should yeah. They just sh way too much Egon. It just they keep <laughs> cutting back to him. And I'm like, he's still there. Like it should have been like you get one moment of the hands, one moment of his face, and then Nick, you have her be like, ah, yeah, and then it's gone. That's it. You <laughs> That's don't need true. the hug after. You don't need the like. Him looking at the Ghostbusters, being like, "Hey, that's true." Like, there's just <laughs> so many moments yeah. after, and it it. How would you have one played achieved. the uh, the mom catharsis then? I'm not sure. Um, I like the I like the mom hug. I did like, but the mom I agree. Hug. It, yeah, maybe maybe we just have the, what you described there with Phoebe, and then the mom hug, maybe. and that's it. And I think maybe there's a way to do it because even thinking about how like Onward did a very similar thing where like the dad is back for a second, right? Uh, and then they one of them has to make the sacrifice, and you see it from far away, like. 
maybe you do that mm. instead of like having it be like really uptight and close like you're getting to participate in the egon daughter yeah, hug that was great that and onward work. but the difference is we want to see him because we're fans of the originals Right, which is why. Uh, but I, again, I don't think fans are wanting to see him, though. I think, like, I, I, f- I'm just giving you the executive rationale. Yeah, so, you're right. The executives are like, yeah, we got to get that. This is something fair, I knew I wanted to talk about because when we talk about Ghostbusters fans or Star Wars fans or Lord of the Rings fans or whatever, like, there appear to be different factions of fans, right? True. Like, there are the fans who are who are like, they see this, the, the you know this this nostalgia moment that is supposed to make people cry, and they're like cringe. But they are like hardcore Ghostbusters fans. They're called Busters. <laughs> Busters. And the community is busting. Feel, and yeah. they and they are upset. You know, they're like, this is ridiculous. This is not true to the the vibe at all. But then there are other people who think that they're Star Wars. Uh, uh, yeah. Ghost, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really talking about Star Wars here. Uh, think that they're real fans. They go to the conventions. They have all the paraphernalia, and they're like, "Oh, they're so beautiful! I cried and remind me of my childhood and nostalgia." Blah, blah blah. Posers. Exactly. Is that what's going on? I think that I'm upset. We we, we shouldn't gatekeep fandoms because if you like something, you're a fan. I'm totally fine with gatekeeping. Yeah, you of course you are. Because fan um, fandom is cringe. you're the gatekeeper. Fandom is cringe to I begin am the with. Key master. <laughs> yeah, fan- do it. Fandom is cringe <laughs> as hell to begin with. So if you're gonna be a fan. You can gape keep because that's cringe as hell too. Everything's cringe. All so right. In, in this, if universe, you have a poster on your wall of a movie, you're a loser. I'm a loser. Well, I don't have them anymore. Everyone's a loser. Is my point. Yeah. Every, everyone's cringe, so gatekeeping is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought through this hypothesis. I think some people are just happy to have more. You know, mm. even if it's not the greatest, at least there's another Ghostbusters. Yeah. Do you right. think those people? What do, well, what do you think? Like. Would you rather have a new bad Star Wars than just no Star Wars well, at all? Well, it's so different with no, Ghostbusters. No, I would rather have no Star Wars than a new bad no, Star but Wars. But it's different Ex- because it's been like 25 years since... If there hadn't been a new Star Wars in 25 years and then there was like a bad one, you'd be excited. Like Phantom Menace, it's bad. People were excited about it. and But now we have like... Guys, this isn't even 16, hypothetical. <laughs> this this is Force Awakens. We can, look at, yeah. we can look at what happened. How did you yeah. feel? Force Awakens came out. Yeah. You know, everyone was like, okay... That was like, yeah. you know, it felt kind of empty. It felt kind of like yeah. a like a cardboard cutout of what a Star Wars movie is. Rogue but <laughs> at least there's some polish there. J.J. Abrams is here. You know, it's Disney. Yeah. Maybe they'll maybe they'll pull it out. You know, but like in hindsight, looking at what we got, I now view Force Awakens. I can't even watch that movie now because sure. I'm like, this is just a like I see through the cracks yeah. now. So where does I see 20, what this is? Go back to Ghostbusters. What is the 2016? Is that the prequels? No, because well, well, no, everyone is. still hates the 2016 one more. And I think when the dust settles, this one will be accepted as like, it's fine. Yeah. And the 2016 one will still be hated. Everyone Did will try to forget it. Did this movie acknowledge the 2016 one? No. no. Because the 26- I saw those dates were on the wall and they said like all these ghost events in 1984 and then it just skipped to 2021. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. no ghosts. In- well, because 20, yeah. the 2016 one was an alternate universe one. It's a reboot. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like it's those non-canon. actors, like Bill Murray and stuff, are in it, but they're not the same characters. Yeah, they just have like cameos as like random. It's a what people. if? It's a yes. Yeah. Is it take place in the same? Uh, is is it like the first one again? But just, yeah, it's whoop. exactly the same it's as the as first one. As if the first two yeah. did not happen. Yep. And oh, these wow. are the these girls are the original women are the original. How dare you? I'm sorry. Are the original <laughs> Ghostbusters? <in laughs> you that just showed. Camp. You just showed your body. Guys, oh I, I meant to say guys, but then it was girls. Whatever. Them gals. I don't care. I've never seen the movie. I didn't care. I honestly like you thought monster. that people. I thought that people went too crazy in their criticism of it yes. because I'm like, guys, who cares? Like, I, again, I haven't seen the Ghostbusters movie. I didn't get the fan. I didn't get that there was like fans of Ghostbusters, but then people were like really, really upset. There's fans. I, I mean, it's uh, written by Paul Feig, who I think also did Bridesmaids. Yep. And that's one of my favorite comedies of all time. I thought it was gonna be fine, but then your virtue signaling it's now. The fa- I am. Did you see it? What? Did you see Ghostbusters twenty sixteen? No. It's it's not great, but it's like if but, you, it, I think it, you would like it because you have no attachment to Ghostbusters. Yeah, and you love Thor, it, huh? Isn't Chris Hemsworth? Chris Hemsworth isn't isn't it? He's like the did he's like the bimbo uh, mm-hmm. secretary. Oh right, and he's funny, and like I think there's funny moments, but like you really have to go in with like it's just skit comedy, like it's a parody of Ghostbusters that is really fucking missing the point. Right. Okay. See, yeah, it's funny because now as a as someone who has gone through this with Star Wars, I see what they did with this franchise and I I weep for them because it's the same thing, you know? It's like they it's it's as if instead of doing Force Awakens, they first tried to like 
reboot Star Wars and it's like, hey, Luke Skywalker and the Death Star and all that stuff never happened, but now we have Rey and she is the same kid. Like, you know, it's like they tried to like just wipe the thing and do yeah. that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars fans would friggin' revolt if that happened. So then they were like, okay, 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 okay. That didn't work. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's try to make the Force Awakens. And then so that's what they did. And do you think uh, there's gonna be sequels? Uh they probably it- will. Maybe it's this one did it's well. Doing, it's doing pretty well, yeah. yeah. Like forty plus million. But you got that again. child problem again. Like by the time, like Mackenzie Grace, is that McKenna, her last name? McKenna Grace. McKenna Grace yeah. will be, she'll be like Flynn or Flint or whatever, like Wolfhard, and then you <laughs> age out, and then <laughs> suddenly I mean, Finn, Finn Wolfhard, you know, and then yeah. suddenly Wesley Crusher is just like creepy to look at, with, and you're like, oh, <laughs> stop! Don't like, like looking at Wesley so Crusher. that's just dangerous. You can't Ooh. make a trilogy with kids. Uh, will. Fuck, what's Wesley his name? Crusher? Wesley Crusher. Yeah, he's, that's TNG? that character's name. Who? What's his name? Will. The next generation Star Trek, bro. Who's Star that? Trek. Who's that? He's who? Will. And Beverly Crusher's oh. son. I don't know who Ensign. these people are. I'm not a Star Trek fan. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, over the course of the show, a child actor hits puberty and just Will becomes Wheaton. kind of gross. Oh, yeah, Will Wheaton. Oh, Will yeah. Wheaton. I know yeah. who that is. Handsome yeah. kid. I think that, like, <laughs> I mean, like, Stranger Things got two seasons of, like, young kids and then they were teenagers by the third season. Right. Uh, and I think that girls kind of age less awkwardly than boys do because boys just go through weird Man, gangly that's true. The boys look weird. Yeah. I don't want to see them in this transitionary <laughs> phase. Be a kid and then be a man. Would you guys ever see the movie <laughs> Boyhood? No. I, no. Yeah, it's, it's, I'd an, like to. it's amazing to see like year to year how like like the kid will be like, Oh, that's a handsome young man. Then you're like, ew. Honestly, <laughs> the next year's like, handsome again. Maybe, like, okay. it's just, maybe it's like as males, we are watching this and it makes us feel uncomfortable because I'm like, Major I see triggered. myself and I knew how <laughs> awkward I felt at like, you know, yeah. 14, 15 it's or whatever. It's so funny, man. I have this cousin. <laughs> I remember he was just always like a, a doughy little like Pugsley of a kid. Yeah. And then one one time I went out there for Christmas is like the next, like Alberta, right? I go there like once a year. One year I went out there and suddenly he was just like chiseling stone. I was like, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the family, buddy. Yeah. You did it. You broke through. It's like they, they should One just jump. Us. If only the progression of puberty just jumped right to there. But there, I feel like there's this uncanny valley of like, yeah. you see, if you, you see a, a, Peach a boy at 14 and you're just like, this is wrong. Well, there's he's something 18. wrong here. I didn't realize that Finn Wolfhard is 18. I'm trying to picture Finn Wolfhard as Paul Atreides. Adolescence, <laughs> adolescence is getting later and later. That's, That's what's happening, I That's guess. That's fair. Yeah, okay, he was a nothing character. That sucked. And Lucky is even a Less. more nothing character. And I, that was a whole waste of my time. Oh, yeah. Oh, what yeah, was, Lucky. was the point of I, <laughs> even developing that storyline at all? This is what's so funny. When was, I write the synopses, I, I'm like, oh, he meets this character. So I'm going to put this character in the synopsis because she's important to the plot. She joins the adventure later. And then mm-hmm. as I wrote, I was like, oh, I didn't feel the need to include Lucky at all. No, <laughs> we needed four people in yeah. Ghostbusters uniforms. Preferably one from each race. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> also, I had no idea her name was Lucky the whole movie. No, me neither. I was like, I, oh, it's the girl. The one scene I liked with her, I liked her attitude. Uh, I liked the scene when she was in jail. <laughs> that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah that was kind of funny. That was hilarious. Yeah, and, but, and she's the, she's the police chief's daughter for some reason. Yeah. For the, uh, the, literally the sole reason for her like to be in that scene. Yeah, fair, so that she can help them get the stuff back. That, yeah, I was confused about that because I guess she let them into the station she knows the keys that you need, I guess. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I feel wait, like, did she help anyone get stuff back? Yeah, she's like, she's in the group when they're going her, to get her, the stuff. Their gear got confiscated, and then they have to get it back from the police station, and I guess she okay. lets them in. I didn't even oh, see okay. this. Yeah. And then, well. I remember they, her, like, sliding over the bench, or the, the oh, okay. counter. When she, or when they use the ghost to eat through the metal, that was sweet. Yep, that was smart. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that was interesting. My One of my hit picks is... Uh, when they're riding through the town chasing Muncher and they're destroying stuff. I remember watching and being like, there better be consequences to this. And there was. And I was very glad. I thought that scene mm. went on for a little bit. Agreed. A little, a little too, long. too long. Yeah. And also, I, I was very cognizant of like, that girl's not on that chair. Yeah. <laughs> every time it CG, zoomed out, it yeah. was like the yeah. gun was obscuring her face. And then every time it clicked in, it was like, that's a green screen. Yeah. I did have I a moment where I was like, this is very dangerous. <laughs> it's very green screen. Yeah. But <laughs> this the, is, she's a 12 year old girl and her brother is driving the brother. car. Like what if she, like they drive pretty close to the cars parked on the side yeah. of the road a few times. I'm like, what would you do? What would Trevor do? Flint Wolfhard. Well, we've seen hereditary. That's what he would do. <laughs> it's, he would leave her seatbelt into the chair it's and go home and not tell his mom. It's literally Can you imagine? Hereditary. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Oh no, 
that's so, I had such a sharp image of that in my yeah. mind. That was horrible. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Oh, watch our watch episode. Our Gosh, yeah. Be a good episode. Good episode. Um, what is it? You can't get back on track no, after we're in the hip picks, thing. McKenna. We're in the hip picks and nipics now. Hail Gozer. <laughs> what was that? Hail Gozer. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that, that Hail payment. Oh, <laughs> oh. I thought you were talking about like the key oh man it's like a very similar plot too basically the same movie oh my gosh no it's not okay (laughs) (laughs) um my favorite uh i don't know i think i feel like it was a good tone promise at the beginning when um callie is cutting uh trevor's hair and someone or i guess their landlord shows up the door and she's like can't you answer the door or something and he's don't your legs work? And he's like, I'm not an adult. <laughs> like his, his yeah. legs aren't long enough. Or I something? thought the funniest joke was when he's like, yeah, but you're a mom. You live for us now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. Awesome. yeah. They had some good back and forths. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. I like podcast. Uh, I think when he was like, uh, he's like, do you believe in spirits? Or do you believe in supernatural or whatever? And she's like, no. And he's like, what are you kidding me? Like the, the Illuminati, Bono, Beyonce, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. How do you think we got the pyramids? And she's like, slaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that woke joke that Lucky made? No, what? Luck, it was oh. like they're talking about like uh, Gozer, Gozer being genderless, yeah. and then she's like, "That's pretty woke." Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. She Oof. said it like quietly though. They didn't. No, like, didn't they didn't it. own the joke. She said like she said pretty woke. Pretty for, woke for four thousand BC or something. Yeah, yeah. Yuck. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I think people on both sides of the aisle could could not like that. And joke. I, it's a cringy and joke. I, yeah. I feel like maybe it's. Like, is it a reference to the fact that people freaked out about there being women in the 2016 one? Not uh, being, not being women, it. but that, like all the characters were women. Can you imagine know. Gozer comes out and instead of being Olivia Wilde, it was just, it was David Bowie, <gasps> with, like star on his face. <laughs> oh, but it's, yeah, CG what? David Bowie. He's dead. <laughs> D-H. <laughs> but they still do it. They're like, we're already doing Harold Ramis. Just, yeah, don't even ask for the all ghosts Just all day. pay the guys extra. What did, did you guys think that? Wait, 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 wait. That one actor is dead? I saw the four Harold thing. Harold Ramis plays who? Egon. Egon. That the actor's, actor's dead. Did he shoot the movie? Or was that... No, he's been, he's been dead for like a decade. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. I was, was going to ask, Did you? how convincing did you find I that CG? Thought, I thought the actor was just there yeah. and then so, they put blue on him after. I think he thought r- that Harold Ramis wasn't dead, but they had him in this movie with no lines? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, no. I thought this... <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, the CG, did a great job. Yeah, no, I, like, I, that's I proof, knew nothing yeah. about this that's going in. That's pretty fucked up to put an actual dead guy's ghost in a movie. What do you mean? It's a little it's just, bit weird. It's weird. They do that all the time now. That's like standard no, but procedure. as a ghost. As a ghost, yeah. I'm not just saying having like a, you know. CG. The fact that he's a ghost, that he is a dead person, his character is dead, and that you yeah. see him die from a heart attack in a movie. Why is that more Wait cringe? a second. You're just used to it now because you've seen yeah. Carrie Fisher as a forced well, ghost. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand why that's different than showing them as a not ghost. Is there a ghost? I don't know. It's, it's just, just like it's the, a little on the nose. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's like it's like oh, and if he were here, he would be doing this. You could just turn on the TV and be like, "Look, son, your father's still with us. <laughs> <laughs> there he is as a ghost." <laughs> it's oh just it's a little creepy. I, yeah. I really sure. like the the way they showed restraint at the beginning and keep him in darkness and stuff. I actually wondered. I was like, is it CG or a body double? It really worked for me. But mm. but that final scene, they just do it too much. I feel like it dipped a little bit into the uncanny valley when he like smiles. Mm. It was weird. Yeah, a little bit. It was a little bit. But like I was I was impressed. I was like It was good. Oh man, this uh I this is this is a real ghost right now. <laughs> CG was like hit or miss with the movie. Did you think that the styling of the dogs? Oh man. Like, they're like claymation in the first one yep. or something. Yeah, and I felt like they tried to main retain the, the look. I think there is some animatronics, like especially early on, like when he like lifts his head out of the bag and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I that's think that's an animatronic. And on the car too, and he's yeah. like leaning down. And that stuff's cool. But I think the design is dated and it, tacky. yeah, it did not look good. And so it just where the movie kind of works other places, I feel like all the design of the ghosts were kind of a little bit tacky. Yeah. Like the minor ghost too. It was like, the, oh yeah, M- yeah, Muncher yeah. was obviously a Which was also yeah, a but callback, I guess. Way less interesting. It's a, yeah, it's a callback to the taxi driver in the first one. Yeah, Trying yeah. to get him to be in like a happy yeah. meal or something, you know? Yeah, and like ghosts are so 80s. I don't know, just like all the- Are you a god? The fact that the, when you start to see the ghosts, it just, it's it loses that, that uh, horror edge of the family action movie. I think it just, it just fact feels family. different. The fact yeah. family. It just feels like they just lost the fucking point. And I, that's my problem with this movie. Is like, there's a lot of really good, but then at the end, they just kind of like, they're not sure of what they're going for anymore. Yeah. They're just, it's just messy. I feel like um, there are times when I'm like happy that I'm on a movie podcast. And there are other times where it makes me kind of sad because 
Uh, Why am I watching this? Well, <laughs> I'd rather be in because I want to say right now. <laughs> I want to say right now that like I don't want to support the Hollywood doing any of, any more of these mm-hmm. of these stupid like hey there was this successful franchise before the year two thousand and people liked it and you know what hey we're gonna bring it back and look at this cool trailer it's gonna make you feel things because it's gonna make you remember something tune in but, next month for Matrix the, Four but the <laughs> movie is just like and I understand that you know I don't want to bash it like too hard because I understand that um, Reitman uh, so the original ones Jason Ivan. Reitman is the son yeah and Ivan is the dad yeah so this was directed. Or written, written and directed written by and, Jason. Yeah, he's got a writing credit on it, and Dan Aykroyd does too, and Gil Keenan does. I don't know who that is. Um, but anyways, written, written and oh, directed it's by old Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Gil, you've done it again. We're eating um, dinner tonight. Uh, uh, Jason Reitman, his dad did it, and so he's like, oh, I'm gonna really, you know, do a tribute to the original movies, and it's like, I want, I really want to do it right, and we're gonna yeah. bring back the original guys, and we're gonna like, you know, this is gonna be good. It's gonna be, you know, it's worth doing. Um, but at the same time. I'm like, this is just soulless. This is like, like fair enough. If this was like a, if you made like a documentary or something, um, or like a, a, a reunion thing event and you brought the people back and if you're remembering stuff, it's like cool. But like, this is just, you're, you're parading this corpse of this franchise out oh, or literally. Yeah, this, di- <laughs> this di- yeah, exactly. And it's just like, there's a, it's like a, like you guys said, it's just like on the nose. It is, it's like cringe to a certain no. degree. And I'm just, I wish they would stop doing it. And so the point being that I want to say, like, I'm not going to see any of, the, of these movies that but they do again, but we probably will. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard because, like, this one to me is clearly a labor of love. Like, it doesn't seem like they, right. they didn't cut corners. They didn't, like, rush this. It's like they, they had an idea they wanted to make, and they, they put the work in. And it's like, it's a well-crafted movie with good ideas. But I... It's a decrafted movie. It's a decrafted movie. But, this fair, is, fair. but there are certain constraints. Like, I think I would have liked it more if there was a gang... Rather than just the one girl, yeah, agreed. like trying to like get the like to be Ghostbusters. Yeah, you but, eliminate the brother and have another friend, and then so you start to have a Scooby Gang. Buddy. But the thing is, she's the new kid in a town, right? So like that's not that realistic. Like if you think of Stranger Things, when we open on that town, those kids are already playing D and D. They're already friends, yeah. right? And I can imagine them becoming Ghostbusters, but that doesn't work with the whole we're moving to a new town, my my grandpa's well, old house. But you can have like uh someone at school that hates her, like they hate each other because they're like diametrically opposed and then at the end they have to come together like you can do that yeah. kind of plot where you're building them like you're, you're putting them against each other but then that that rivalry turns into a friendship yeah there's just some elements missing that would make it a lot more compelling from a character standpoint and mm-hmm. i feel like that's something that's missing from this like phoebe is cool and she's compelling we want to see more of her yeah. the actress is good uh it's fun to see her go on this adventure but like None of the other characters really contribute anything that they have like a specialty in. Like mm. in the beginning, uh, Paul Rudd's character Gary is like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you open this trap." And so we, we, you know, if he, if his scientific expertise yep. came in again at some point, that yep. would be cool. If podcast had some sort of skill that well, was useful, th- his is easy too because like he's <clears> recording <throat> all the time, so you get him to record a ghost thing. Sure, and then they like when they're doing investigations, they're like. Like, oh, if we only knew what, what they said. And they're right. like, he's like, I know what they said. And then they're listening to the tape. Like, yeah. whatever. Like, there's, yeah. and if you Trevor can make had, him useful. If Trevor was able to, I mean, I guess he drove the car, but like, is that his thing? He's yeah, like, it was. Driving? They, they make it very clear he's a good mechanic. That's like his thing. Yeah, but like, <laughs> what, is he, what else does he fix? Nothing. That's not enough. He just it's, like magically yeah. fixes the car and he knows how to do it somehow. No, but she, she's also a mechanic. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> fix the so weapons. If yep. Trevor had some sort of specialty, like that's that's the thing that would make this. If this was like a, he's really dungeon- good at inventory. <laughs> yeah. This was a Dungeons and Dragons things like in like yeah. in Stranger Things where like maybe they don't even, you know, uh, have that be explicit where it it contributes in the end. But at least in Stranger Things, they're like, Will is the mage and so and so is the ranger and blah blah blah. You know, they have these kind of roles and they lay it out so at least we get the feeling that in their minds. They're yeah. fulfilling this role, yep. th- these roles. But in this one, it's literally just like Phoebe does everything, and we helped. Yeah, yeah. And the we're here. Just, yeah, her plus the three Ghostbusters that point their lasers, and then <laughs> brothers like, I'm gonna point my laser over there at these the silos. Okay, which yeah. by the way, that was kind of that a nice. farm would have been stripped of all metal so fast. Oh, why? <laughs> That's valuable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, fair see enough. all that copper on that dirt farm? Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> just joking. Um, it would be. I, I, I guess I will say this though that. It was kind of nice to have Trevor earlier be like, what's a capacitor? And she's like, you know, oh, we have fair. that little moment. And then later he understands, like, oh, if I shoot that, then it'll make That's the traps fair. go. That's fair. So that was kind of cool. You know what? I didn't even connect those dots. Thank right. you. Seven point ten. No problem. Seven point five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. I don't think I have much more to say about it. Honestly, yeah, I'm surprised you went this long. Unless you want to talk about Star Wars for a long time. Nope. I never want to talk about Star Wars again. Okay. Star Trek? Oh, one nitpick that I wanted to to say was Callie and Gary. I don't like how little of uh, each other's personality they actually got to know, you know? Like, it, it shows them meeting. They have a meet cute, and that's cool. But then when he brings the kids to their house, she's like, Oh, I don't have any food here, or whatever. And they're joking back and forth, and that's cool. But like, he never asks her about her life. She doesn't ask him about his. It's not like we see the whole date, huh? We don't see the whole date. Yeah. So then they they like they they're talking about parenting and stuff on the date, and that's nice. But it, I, I feel like maybe, they bang, dude. Maybe maybe I <laughs> they ghost bang. And it's just like the you know, there's the a Matrix. sharing of knowledge that happens. You know, the Matrix too. When like Seraph an avatar, like, your your brain tails twist together. When Seraph is like, you don't know someone until you fight them. Right. After they, they do it as they as bang. demon possessed, they put the key in the key maker right. thing. Oh, <laughs> got him. They uh, they know. I'll put my key in I here. See gate you, keeper. See you Gav- like avatar. Wait, is that a thing? Like the key master and the gatekeeper? Like the key master has to put the key in the gate? Exactly. I think that's the yes. idea, yeah. It's a pee-pees. <laughs> it's an innie outy thing. <laughs> Obviously, Riley. Okay. Welcome to 84. Well, then, all my criticisms are gone. <laughs> it, it, we're, hey, here's but, a nitpick. I hated that that little RC car was like oh, so fast. Uh, yeah. yeah. Unlimited battery and too. And also, it, um, yeah, and it's like, it's actually just one of the spirit traps with wheels on it. Yeah. Where's all the engine and everything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it really bothered me when there's the wide shot of them like driving to the house really fast and the RC cars in front of them driving. I'm like, that thing does not have the battery to go from town to here, but also just like, just take it. Just bring yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Car. No, that was really annoying. Also, is that the glasses like are those binoculars? Are they? Is it a camera? Is it a first? person Yeah, I don't view? understand how he's how he's controlling it. So is it um, VR? What the hell are oh, those yeah. things on your head? Yeah, well, they're that, everything. Those things are from the. They're a Ghostbuster thing. Oh yeah, they wear them, but they're just undef- unclearly defined. So they oh can do really? They want. They don't yeah. say like this helps you see I this. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe not. I don't. Know. I feel like they tried to catch Muncher like three times, and I was like, enough. Yeah. At least have him transform into Slimer, you know? Yeah, and is Slimer, does Slimer come, become like a good guy at any point in the or, can't cartoon? Maybe in the second oh, one, he's like not in like, the movies though. He's like a mischievous pet. Yeah. Not in the movies though. I don't. Re- I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen the second oh, okay. one. Okay. Yeah, Muncher, man, the, he looked weird. Did not like him. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> He not, looked like a, yeah. I don't know, the spitting the metal stuff. Just felt like, I don't know, cartoony. When he shot the metal at them. I was like, geez, you're done. this is dangerous. Yeah. You're, you're dead. And he always misses. <laughs> There's no accuracy. Yeah, he's not called uh, Sharp Munchy, Sharp Shooty sharp, Munchy. <laughs> no, don't Sharp do Shuncher. <laughs> and on that note, thanks for listening <laughs> to Carpool. This what? podcast is not called. They're just movies. Just movies. <laughs> They're just movies, guys. They Tweet at movies. us at TJM Pod. You can email us hello at they're just movies.com. Hello. And next week, we're doing what? French Dispatch. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing it. I guess we're doing that. Did I say that at the beginning? Yeah, you did. You okay. did. I'm so excited. Bonjour. Good movie. I Adieu hope. and goodbye. I yeah, what do you mean? <laughs>